My name's uh, Nick Bailey. I'm a materials manager at Wabash National. I have a degree from Purdue in industrial technology. Um, materials is a interesting field to get into right now, just with the current supply chain um, issues, constraints. Um, but what does STEM have to do with materials, right? You don't think as a, uh, as a student right now, like what does that mean? How do I use STEM degree for materials? Well, um, a lot of blueprint reading. So I have to look at blueprints a lot for materials coming in, um, trying to locate materials. I've got to print blueprints off. So understanding, you know, what does a blueprint show me, um, the char characteristics of what a blueprint is. Um, obviously, depending on where you're at, there might be multiple engineers creating multiple blueprints and they all do it just a little bit differently. So understanding, you know, who the engineer is, if you have questions, you got to reach out to them because um, not everything is the same. I'm in a pretty interesting spot right now in my career because yes, I'm materials, but I have taken over some operations as well. Um, so I'm kind of on both sides of the tracks from an operations and material standpoint. Um, and that has been a very interesting transition for me um, because now not only am I responsible for making sure that the material is there, I got to make sure it gets done right. Um, and so looking at, you know, Kaizen processes, um, you know, the flow of material, the flow of the production line. Do we have the right head count there to be the most effective we can be to produce the numbers we need to be? Um, are things that I never really thought I would use with an industrial technology degree. But, you know, I've been out for five years and I've been lucky that I've been pushed into some spots where it's forced me to kind of go back to what I've learned in college and kind of pull that back out um, one, so I can be successful, but two, I can make my team successful. Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting uh, position I'm in as well because I'm young and I've got people that work for me that are older, right? So I'm freshly out. They've been out for maybe 10, 15 years. They haven't maybe thought about some of this stuff in a long time. And now that I'm kind of pulling it back in, they're like, oh yeah, I, I do remember, you know, X, Y, and Z from when I went to school. Um, and you kind of start extracting that, that education back out of them. And it's been a, a really fun experience to see some of them kind of get back into it um, and start using some of the stuff that they've learned throughout their career through their education. Um, I've got two people that also went to Purdue that have STEM degrees um, that are on my team. So that's been fun just to be able to bounce ideas off one another. Um, I would say the, the most difficult slash challenging part of my job is just getting the workforce to start thinking the same way that we do. Um, whether or not they're educated or not, we all wanna succeed and making sure they understand my thought process so it makes sense to them um, at a lower level has been sometimes challenging because you've gotta take complex ideas like a Kaizen and, and get it down to the, the easiest level of knowledge so they understand it. Um, and that can be challenging because once again, everyone comes from different paths of life. They don't always think the same, right? Some people are here just to get a paycheck and leave. Some people are here to get a paycheck to succeed, to grow. Um, so how do you mesh those two worlds together so you get the best out of everyone? Um, that has been the most challenging, I would say, from just a, a younger uh, professional in this, in this workforce, right? You start, you start challenging some people of seniority and they don't always like that. But once you start doing it and they see the benefits of it, most of the time they'll come back and be like, hey, thanks for doing that. I understand you know, why you're challenging us to, to think that way. So probably the thing I didn't think about when I first got out, but has been um, a challenge slash rewarding part of my job um, to get people to start thinking that way. And it's, it's definitely not easy. I would say the other thing too is being able to um, find like-minded professionals. So at my level, right, I've got another manager with me that runs the front warehouse. Um, I'm more of a shipping receiving uh, manager. So we've got to work closely because we've got to, we've got to represent the same things. We got to have the same values, the same leadership styles, because there can't be any disconnect. Um, and then I start looking at, you know, my broader uh, team of individuals who aren't in the same role as me and how do we get us as a cross-functional team together 
um, to succeed, right? Because we all think differently. You know, I'm very materials focused. They're more operational focused, right? So they want to make as much as they can. And then I'm telling them, hey, you can only make this much and this is why. Um, that, that, has been, that has been fun because you start pushing people to explain why they want to do things the way they want to do it. And, and does that make the most sense for the company at the time? Um, obviously with the supply chain, the way it is, we've been dealt our hand in some of it because, you know, if it gets stuck on a cargo ship out in the sea, there's not a whole lot I can do, right. I'm not going to be able to go get it myself. So, um, that has been a challenging time, but I think it has pushed us to think differently and think smarter and more effectively of how we produce right now. Um, obviously if you don't know anything about Wabash, we build semi trailers, right? So they're big pieces of equipment. There's hundreds of thousands of parts that go into these things, total customer spec. So they say what they want, we build it. Um, and that doesn't always mean that it's coming from inside the US, right? Parts are coming from China um, and we're having to wait for those. So it's been an interesting time for us, um, but we, we hang our hats on being one of the best, right? So we, we take what the customer wants, we do it, we innovate it, we make it all here in the US and we send it out and they're going all over the place. They go to Canada, Mexico, overseas. Obviously the US is a big, big uh, supply chain right now for us. So um, that has been interesting, but overall, just from a STEM perspective, once again, like I said earlier, never would have thought that materials and STEM would go hand in hand as much as they do. Um, I started off on the production side when I first got out of college and obviously you're a little bit more hands-on there. Uh, really, really kind of STEM focused. And then when I went to materials, you're kind of like, well, I don't know if I'll use it, but then you end up using it maybe even more than you did in the production role. So um, I would say my degree at Purdue has opened doors that I never thought were possible. Um, I was very production focused and now materials manager. Probably didn't think that when I first started at Purdue or even when I graduated, but having that in your back pocket to lean on will let you go anywhere you want as long as you're willing to work hard for it. Um, so I would be an advocate, high advocate of STEM uh, education, STEM degrees, just for the fact that you think differently than a lot of people. And that is a very powerful thing to have uh, kind of in your back pocket to use. So uh, I would absolutely say Purdue is the right place to be if you wanna be a STEM, STEM educator, STEM learner, um, and it will open doors that you'll never see coming.